button. So we are now recording. And I will share my screen again. Okay, so that was a good little exercise. But today's lesson is configurations. Okay, so let's say we go back to our old friend, the V8, and we wanted to keep adding stuff to this model to get it production ready. One of the first things that I would draw next is the valve train on this thing. And in this engine, we're gonna have a, uh, a valve spring it's gonna be the same part number all the way down the line. So your intake springs will be one part number. You probably have a different exhaust spring part number. But on every one of these, they're all gonna be a different shape because the piston is in a different position. Some will be open for the intake stroke. Some will be on the power stroke. Some will be on the exhaust stroke. They're all gonna be different heights and to make it worse, if I take them out and I put them on my workbench, they're all gonna be the same height. Okay, so what do you do? This is where something called configurations comes into play. And it's for dealing with parts that can have variable geometry. Okay, so think springs, think air cylinders, hydraulic cylinders, think timing belts, anything like that is a perfect candidate for doing configurations. Okay, when you go out in the world, one of the best things you can do in any design is minimize your part count. So if you've got one air cylinder, use that one air cylinder over the entire machine. It, it becomes much, much cheaper because when you buy in bulk, parts are always cheaper. Okay, if I buy one of something, I expect to pay a premium. If I buy 10,000 of something, I would expect to pay maybe 25% of the single piece price. And it gets really pronounced when you're custom making. Okay, so let's do an example where we actually have a part that has a different shape wherever it is on the machine. And I just happen to have this. So I drew this little backhoe and it's got three hydraulic cylinders. They're all the same part number, they're all the same model, but these could change depending on how you want to orient the arm. So let's put some configurations in each of these cylinders and then move the arm around. So I'm gonna open the part and yeah, it's a pretty simplistic model. So to do a configuration, you come over to the configuration manager. I'm gonna click on the top line right here and I'm gonna say add configuration. I'm gonna do a configuration name called 12 inch extension. And I'm gonna save it. Now I'm gonna change the length of this rod right here to 12 inches. So I'm gonna edit the feature And D1 is my extension length. So I'll change this to 12 inches. And down here on the configurations, this is where you have to be careful. So it, you have the option for this configuration, all configurations or specify. I'm gonna stick with this configuration for this example. And I'm gonna say, okay. My part extends. And now I'm gonna add a few more configurations to this thing. So I'll come back to the configuration manager, go to the top line, I'll add one. 
uh, let's see, configuration name, let's say it's going to be six inch extension. Say OK. Go back, same thing. We'll do this configuration. Underneath this highlighting, it does say six inch extension. We'll make this six inches. And lastly, let's put in a 24 inch extension on our hydraulic cylinder. I'll say, okay. And again, I'll make the length 24 inches. Now we've got three different configurations plus our default. I'm gonna save this. I'm gonna close the part. We'll let the assembly rebuild. Now when I come back to my backhoe, if I click on the part, notice I get this little pop-up menu on the top. And here are all of my different configurations. So let's make a 12 inch extension. I'll choose it, I'll hit the green check and the backhoe starts moving. So that's pretty cool. But it's also not very smart. So for example, if I change this one down here to 24 inches, it'll do it. It's got enough range of motion. But if I come up to the top one and do 24 inches, well, it tried to push the end of the hydraulic cylinder past the range of motion for the linkages. And you end up getting all of these error messages. So it's not smart enough to know, oh, I'm at the end of my travel. So if you get a whole bunch of errors, that could be what's going on. You've just, you've done something mechanically that you shouldn't have done, okay? And that's configurations. It's a very simple concept, but I gotta tell you guys, I see it get abused a lot badly. And where it gets abused is I've actually heard people say, oh, well, if I wanna make the frame for a machine, I can just have one part number for you know, a piece of steel tubing, something like that, piece of steel angle iron. And then I'll just make configurations for all the different lengths I want throughout the machine. No, bad idea, guys, really, really bad. Okay, if there's one thing I want you to get out of this class, it's that every part number in a machine should have its own unique geometry. Okay, if you have a different shape, give it a different part number. Now, that's not to say that you can't do families of parts. So for example, if I'm using steel angle iron of a given cross section, maybe if it, only varies by the length, I can do a family of parts and I'll call it part number 308-12 for a 12 inch long piece or a 308-24 for a 24 inch long piece. That is totally fine because each part has a unique identifier. Where you get in trouble is if you say part 308 and then you have a configuration that's six inches long, 12 inches long, 24 inches long, and you have no idea what you're getting. That is what you want to avoid. That is really, really bad, okay? So never ever do that. So when you think configurations, think things that are meant to change shape. If you try to stretch a piece of angle iron, it's gonna break, so don't do it, okay? 
At this point, what I'd like you guys to do, try doing this example that I just did, turn in the backhoe as homework. So get started on that. Also, if you guys wanna talk about anything on the exam tomorrow, I intentionally left a lot of free time in this class. So we'll, we'll talk about anything that you guys wanna talk about. Okay. This backhoe is back on the website. So if you go to, let's see, lessons and come down to lesson 22 configurations, the backhoe is under lesson 22. Okay, so what else would you guys like to know about for the Sterling engine or the exam tomorrow? Yeah, I had a couple questions about the Sterling engine. Yeah, Gage, go ahead. So uh, I was we were I was working on it a little more last night, and I realized when I was going through the build materials that. Um, so, did you want us to put adhesives and stuff like that into the build materials? Yes. So, would you want us to add it as, like, as like an exterior? It's like the Excel spreadsheet that comes with the build materials is all based off of what the parts are that are currently in it, correct? So would I need to manually add a line in the below that? No. So let's take a look at that. Uh, so for example, on line 20, I've got glue, cyanoacrylate, it's Loctite part number, blah, 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 blah. So what I want you to do for glue is create an empty component, no geometry in it, just fill out the attributes. So this will be the description, glue, cyanoacrylate, the vendor will be Loctite, the vendor part number is uh, 1739050. Create that, save that, add it to your assembly. That will put it on your bill of material. Then when you go do your exploded view, I want you to point to where you want the glue applied and just say, apply three drops or however much of item six, something like that. And that's how, how, that's how I want you to handle glue. How will we know where to apply glue? It's your design. So I would apply glue between like the CD and the CD hub. That would be a good spot. I would apply glue between the nylon spacer and the crankshaft so that the nylon spacers don't slide axially. Um, some people may want to try gluing the PVC arm onto the can. I personally wouldn't. I would go with the double-sided tape and have an actual solid model of it, the tape that is. Um, if you want to try it, go for it. It's your design. If you want to experiment, I'm good with that. So did that answer the question, Jackson? Yes. Okay. So you want us to make the, the part, the bill of materials in Excel and then put it into the blueprints? No, well, we've, ne we've never used Excel in this class. You're gonna yeah, use- Yeah, I was confused because you just pulled up a Google Sheets of materials and I was looking at the, the um, the project guidelines here, and it says to have a bill of materials on the third page. Right. Of your assembly drawing. Yep. And I was trying to figure out where would I put the glue in there? Would I have to manually add a line to the bill of materials? No. So the, the glue will automatically appear once you add the empty component to your assembly. Do you need what me do you to mean empty component? Okay, let me actually do that then. It seems to be causing quite a bit of confusion. Uh, 
Okay, so I got my engine. And let's say that I want to add, let me see if I already have glue in there. No, good. Okay, so here's how I would add glue and annotate it between the CD and the CD hub. So I'm gonna create a new part, my usual part template, go down to the properties. And let's see, I told you guys, it's gonna be glue cyanoacrylate. So that will go over here in the description. However, it's gotta be in all caps because it's gonna become the title of the print. Glue. And the part number I gave you guys was this. Is the glue should be in the baggie or we're gonna, if we will use like a different glue, should we specify like different? Yes, Maybe? if you if you use a different glue, just write down whatever you used. I do have glue uh, in room 102 that you can use. So if, you, if you're on campus or can get to campus, feel free to use my supplies. Is the tape the same way to you? Yeah. Or I, the tape should be in the baggie? Uh, no, the tape, all of the consumable stuff, the tape, the glue, all of that, that's all in 102. For the baggies that I've got to send out, I'll probably just take, snip off like four inches of tape or something like that, roll it up so it's not sticky, and then just drop that in the baggie. Okay, thank you. Uh, okay, so file, do a save as, and we'll call this glue. So that's great. And now we'll add it. Also, would you want us to make a balloon like you did here in this one? Uh, or could we also do the same thing we did with the super glue and create an empty part because we don't have the, or was we haven't, we haven't quite yet made anything that's able to be molded in any way. And we're not going to. Okay, so when it comes to the balloon, all I want you guys to do is do a flat side, a flat top, and just revolve an L shape around. Do not right. get crazy complicated. All right. If I had to fully define this balloon with the convolutions that I drew, that would be an ugly blueprint. And it, it wouldn't have a lot of decent academic value. Mm -hmm. So just don't go there, go with just, flat surfaces. All right. Okay, so now I've got glue in my engine. So it will be on the bill of materials. Let's see if I have a drawing for this thing. I do, unbelievable. Did I do an explosion? Nope, no explosion. But let's imagine this thing is exploded. All I want you to do is come in here, grab a note, point to the site of application, and we're gonna say, apply two drops of item. I don't know what the item number is, so let's go to item. 
Let's go put our bill of material in. Insert tables, bomb. Choose the view to get our data from. Make sure you use the class bill of materials. Do not use a generic bomb. Okay, so item 15 is our cyanoacrylate glue. And I'm gonna come back to sheet two. And that's how I want you to handle glue, folks. Also, I noticed on your design for this one specific, this uh, engine specifically, mm -hmm. you had given us the displacer discs, but with like only like ha going halfway through the disc. Correct. But you used two in this one. Yes. And you put it straight through both of them. So Correct. I figured you were just trying to say that like. You're just going to push the, the, how am I trying to say this? The actually would have read straight through it? Right. Yes. But I would, I, I would, I just, I just put a full, full, a through all hole just yeah. so we didn't have clipping. That's fine. I don't, I really don't care about that. Yeah. So what I did, you can even see it right here. I put the, I pushed the rod through. And the reason I brought the tool down and indicated the center was so that you guys could actually find the center once this disc was off the CNC machine. Because mm -hmm. if you get too much dragging on the sidewalls, this thing just won't work. So I was trying to give you the best opportunity to make the thing work. Also I had a question to your elbow there. Okay. It's threaded. So what did you, what is what is that that you put out the side? That's to go that's sticking into the elbow. What is that inside the elbow? So one of the bushings that I bought one year from Lowe's, it did have a quarter MPT thread on the inside. The ones I've been buying from McMaster Car just have a slip fit on them. It's, right. just, it's just an older part that I had. I have a question about the homework problem. Yeah, yeah Gage, go ahead. Or Sam. <laughs> uh, can I share my screen? Yep, it's all yours. Oop, I may not have hit multiple. Okay, now try it. Okay, so I, I went into the, I opened up the part and then did the different configurations. And then okay. it said it said to make a configuration, an assembly configuration. So I assume that was just over here. Right. Um, so then I, like, is that what you wanted? That's exactly what I wanted. Okay. And so then that's fine. And I just had a couple of questions um, like about the exam. Okay, Just go how for to, it. Uh, how to do chamfer callouts and thread callouts. Okay, on the you got it. Let's see. Let me get rid of this section. I'm gonna use this only because it's here and convenient. So let's say that I put a chamfer on this edge. Doesn't really have one, but you know, it's convenient geometry. And we'll make a drawing of it. I already have a drawing. Nope. 
Okay, so when you go to do a chamfer call out, come under smart dimension, go down to chamfer dimension down here. And then you gotta choose two faces for it to measure the angle from. And the faces will be represented as linear edges. And that's how you drop a chamfer dimension on. Okay, and what was the other one you wanted, please? The other one was thread callouts. Okay, thread callouts, easy enough. So that one, you just go insert, annotations, and uh, whole callouts. So let's do... Would that work for exterior threads as well? No, it doesn't. So for example, on the spindle problem, uh, you would actually have to point at it, put a note and say, you know, thread one inch eight or one inch 12. Okay, so you just have to do a note for exterior threads. Correct. Okay. Are the yeah. cosmetic the exterior threads come with the design, when you make the drawing, I think they come as an annotation on its own. Sometimes they do, Emmanuel, and sometimes they don't. Um, I've had times where they didn't pop up and I'm not exactly sure why. If they do pop up, just make sure that you go in and you modify the note so that it's in all capitals. I don't know why SolidWorks thinks that lowercase is acceptable. I have been yelled at by more old timers for using lowercase. So uh, do not get yourself in that situation. Um, for the materials for the um, Sterling engine uh, parts, you want them all to be their vendor and part number, right? For the most part, yes. Okay. On the CD hub that we made in house, and that's just black PLA. And you can put that down as the material note. Otherwise, uh, wait, we made that. What? Yeah, the CD hub. So this thingy. Um, this thing right here. That was made in house at Crosby. Oh, I see. Okay. So that's not something with a, a vendor or a manufacturer. Okay. Cor correct. We made this. So just put down black PLA and call it good. All right. But uh, for everything. Yeah, pretty much for everything else. So like the, uh, like the foam displacer disc, that's going to be Lowe's part. You're going to say make from Lowe's part number. 15099. And how would you go about doing that? You're literally just going to put a, let me see if I have a print of this. Okay, so you don't actually edit the material of it at all. You just. Correct. Um, okay, add it as a note in the drawing. Got it. Yep. And what else can I answer, folks? I had a question about um, whole callouts and purchase parts. Okay. Actually, like, it's like, say, like you had a, like the CD in the drawing. Do you actually have to call out the hole in the middle, or do you just dimension it, or do you just leave it there? So, where that is a mating surface to something else, I would call it out, but I would make it reference, and I'd make it reference because it's purchased and you're not controlling it. So for example, probably a good one would be, let's do this nut. Okay. So for purchase parts, basically all the references or all the dimensions we do are gonna be reference. Yes. Okay, unless we edited them. 
ourselves. Correct. Yep. And then you're going to tell the machinist exactly what the dimension is that you want. Okay. So like if you're doing a purchase part, get rid of this awful tapped hole call out. Those are terrible. It's better to do something like insert annotation. So if I were making this, this is what I would want to see. You know, if you're not making it, eh, you know, you could probably get away with. Oops. Oh, sh shush. Go away. On a purchase part, you know, you could do something like that. And then, Thank the, you. Oh, sorry. and then I would do something like this. So you do the overall dimensions as reference. So the width across the flats, the height. And I put a note in right here. I, I forget what that part number actually is, but. That's how I would handle a 256 nut. Okay. And when you make your prints, always remember, stay out of this area under the revision block. Because as we change this part over the life of, of its production, Every change has to be recorded right here. So you gotta keep room for it. I have a few questions. Yeah, Emmanuel, go ahead. Okay, first one is, um, I submit the design, but I figure out I need to make a change. Are you gonna uh, check the design, the drawings against the actual model? Should I make a revision? Uh, I really wanted to do that in the worst way, but the simple fact is I never had time and that would be testing your model making skills. And this is not a model making class, not, not physical hardware model. Okay. okay. So okay, that's not really fair game. Okay. So I will not submit a, another design with a revision. I wouldn't bother. Okay. Then, um, um, oh, do you know how to put the ribbon with all the all the icons back on the solid box? It got disappeared. Oh man! So you're talking about all all this this ribbon up here? Yes. Uh, if not, I I will just poke around, I will find it. Just if you know it out of your head right now. So I would come up here, I would right click and try to do enable command manager. Uh, okay, let me see what's happening. Enable. Oh yes, yes, okay. Thank you. I got lucky. Because I got to admit, one of my weaknesses is just messing with the interface. Okay, I don't know how. I can model and handle part numbers all day long, but some of those weird interface turning stuff on and off, I just, I just never do it. Now that you mentioned about modeling, this backhoe, yes. would you uh, 
uh, would you make it? Would you make it completely on sheet? Uh, you know the main the main frame the main uh, arm. Would you make it on, on sheet metal because this is you know plate? This is how it's made, or or would you model it as you know as a box and then convert it to sheet metal? Personally, I would start with sheet metal. Okay. Because chances are, if I were working for Komatsu or something like that, I'm imagining I'd get in some 25 millimeter thick sheet metal. I'd probably laser it or water jet it. So I need the pattern for the laser or the water jet. And then I'd have to do a weldment drawing to weld the cap strips on the top and bottom. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, yeah, that's, I guess, I know the answer, but there are variables, uh, a way to make variables in the configurations, right? Yes. Okay. So the back is the only homework right now, right? Correct. All right. And just a quick question. Yep. How is that you've been doing in like, in your model views and stuff? How is it that you've been uh, cutting it in half? Okay. I always miss when you do that. Like okay. I, always, I look up and you're just doing it. And I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. How do you do a sectional view in a model? Okay. Where's my bottom can? Top can. So you're coming up here to section view. Okay. You click on it. And, oh, it, and then, by yeah. default, it grabs everything. Mm -hmm. So if you just do the green check, there you go. Now you can look inside. Although sometimes like on the example for the Sterling engine, I only had it partially sectioned. And it's a toggle. So we'll do section by component. I'll hold down the shift. So if I want to leave all of those as unsectioned, whoops. Come on. All right, so exclude selected. There, that's it's what it should have done. I like you selected the elbow, but it still did it. Did I not select it? Weird, so I've got the elbow assembly. It should have grabbed I think it's still cutting it in half because you have the knot on the inside. Uh, and uh, I, I didn't determine what is that that's going through your balloon there. So is that I a have screw. Yeah, I have a two fifty six screw going through the balloon. All right, you have a screw and then a nut and a washer. Right. That makes sense to me. So I did a hook, just a hook that goes straight through. And you can try that. I found that trying to adhere anything to the balloon just never worked for me. I'd put the glue on and then whatever that dusty latex stuff is, uh, that stuff just, because... yeah, it just didn't adhere. So what did you do with this one then? Did you just like push a balloon up through and then use washers and a nut to sort exactly. of pinch it off? Yeah, exactly. I took a pin and I pushed a pin through the balloon first and made a pilot hole. And then I sandwiched the balloon between the screw head and this washer. I think I'm going to try the hook and see what I can do with it. I, go for it. You may have better yeah, luck than some, I did. Could buy some liquid rubber. I, I try it as long as it's on the bill of materials. I don't care. So for, for,
purchase parts on the material note? Can you just do material and then part number, whatever? Like material and then Walmart part number 500 or whatever? Abs uh, yeah, so as long as you've got the vendor and the vendor part number to describe what it is, sure, that's fine. Okay. Can you do a simple example of welding and like on a welding drawing? Sure. For the exam. So let's see. So a simple example, let's draw some metal plates. Let's do some quarter inch steel because that's always nice and never burns through. And now we'll make an assembly. And we'll go get our plate. So always remember when you're making an assembly float, oops, float that first component fix it to the assembly planes. That way everything's always nice and square for you. I think if you put your mouse, when you import a piece, when you put your mouse on the set of the origin, it locks it right away. Okay, fully defined, get my first piece in. Yeah, I mean, if it can assume all of the relations it needs, that's all good. Uh, okay. So we'll do view, hide and show, get rid of all these planes. And we'll insert second plate. Make this face on that face. This is probably an example I should save for the next class. Okay, so we will insert an assembly feature and let's put a weld bead right here. And we'll say weld path. Yeah, it's got some nice weld penetration. We'll save our assembly before we make a drawing. Okay, so this actually put the note in incorrectly. So that fillet weld is on the wrong side. Should be like that. Because we're saying near side, near side is always on the bottom. If I pointed here and I wanted it 
on the other side welded, come on, right on that edge, then I would have had this on the top. So bottom is near side. Now let's make a drawing of it. Let's see, so I wanna put in my caterpillar to represent the weld. So insert annotations, we'll come down to caterpillar. I should be able to click on it. So as I mouse over where the weld bead is, it picks it up. There's the weld bead. And I'll put the weld bead on that side. And let's see if I can get it. So are you just hovering your mouse over or are you, or are you clicking? No, I'm actually just hovering. Yeah, okay. good, good call. Okay, so I can't see the weld right there. Now I'll pick up my weld symbol. And as I hover over, I should be able to pick up the weld. Oh, there we go, got it. Oh, come on. Okay, so I'm hovering over, I got the well bead, I click, I'm gonna say, oh, where the heck's my weld symbol going? Okay, so it was mad because I had selected the weld bead, but then I needed to click off on the paper to actually drop the weld symbol. And that's what I was doing wrong. So I've got my weld symbol in, quarter inch fillet weld. And I would do this like any other assembly drawing. So on page one, I'm gonna locate the stuff that I want welded. And I'm gonna put the overall dimensions. So I'm gonna start off the same as I always do, maximum length, width, and height as reference. They're referenced because they're controlled in another component. So now I need to locate my part. This I am actually controlling at this assembly level. So I'm gonna tell the machinist, put the vertical piece of steel back 0.926 and then do the weld. And let's see, that's about all I need for that. So then I would need to go back into my weld drawing and do the explosion. So let's go back into our model. And we will do insert, exploded view. We'll drag this up. Now we'll insert our explode line sketch. I'm gonna get out of that root line. I'm gonna start with a piece of construction geometry and I'm gonna go between those two corners. 
So now I have a line and I'm gonna come off the midpoint of the line. And I think I'm just gonna click right in space, which I normally wouldn't do. But I'm gonna show you guys that now you can apply a geometric relation to this 3D sketch. I'm gonna click on the end of the line and the face and I'm gonna choose on plane and that will automatically extend the line down. Now I'll get rid of this line because I was only using it for construction and to actually let me find the center of that face. And if I want to, I could add another relation. I could go to the end point of that line and the face and say on plane. So now no matter how I move the block, this explode line will always stay on the faces. Okay, that's pretty good. Why you don't like the root line? I, I, mean I find it too unpredictable. I find that it gives way too many jaggies and it just it generally comes out looking awful. I mean, admittedly, it's an old timer taste thing. Okay, so I will now come in here. I wanna collapse this thing. And I can go back to my drawing. Oh, I forgot to do the named view. And I'm gonna get a terrible grade on this test. Oh, come on, cheat one. Yeah, let's see. So now I've got to create my exploded named view. So I go to view orientation, new view, and I'll choose exploded view. Go back to my drawing, go back to sheet two. See if I can put in that exploded view now. I'll show it in exploded state, explode view. There we go. Balloon it. Insert a new sheet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll insert our bomb. So tables, bill of materials. There's our bomb and we will drop it on sheet three. And that's what I would expect for a well-bent drawing, folks. So treat it just about like any other assembly. So page one, overall dimensions as reference, maximum length, width, and height. Locate anything that's gotta be located. So in this case, I'm gonna locate the center plate. I'm not going actually just because the edges all line up and the machinist can see it that way. Put in your weld note to say how big a weld bead you want. 
sheet two, do the exploded view so that we can relate each of the items back to the bill of materials. And sheet three, bill of materials. Okay, I'll keep going if people have questions, but if you need to take off your next class, go for it, folks. Okay, any other questions I can answer for you? I got one thing. Go for it, Sam. Okay, I'm gonna share here. Okay. It's all yours. Okay, it's... Um on this tape here. Okay, looks good. So I have the um, part number, just make from it. This thickness is reference. The yep. width of it is controlled. All right. Would I need this one inch if I have the one inch? I wouldn't need it, right? Because I already have it down here. Correct, that would technically be a double dimension. Okay, so then this is pretty simple. Um, I added a center line here. I'm not sure if yep. I needed that, but yeah, okay. you, you do need that and that looks good. The other okay. thing that you should probably have is a center mark because you've got a rounded edge. A center mark on this? Yes. Go up, there you go. Okay. And you can size that down a little bit. One of the last- Oh, go ahead. One of the things you don't wanna do is just be pointing off to a point in space with that radius dimension. Okay, that, that's what I was gonna ask about. So that makes, that makes sense. Yep. How, how do you ooh, size this down? I'm just trying to- should be able to drag. Take the use documents defaults up. Right, just turn that off. Okay, awesome. Nice, yeah, looking good. Okay, thanks. Oh, uh, how do you spell Morton? Just like that. <laughs> okay, okay. As long as it's working for you, that's all good. <laughs> there we go. Okay, oh, okay. thank you. Great, thanks. Other questions, folks? I have a question on the, uh, go for it. Uh, sorry, uh, I have everything configured. How do I submit it? Do I just save it as is and then send it in? Yep, so just save the assembly, save all the parts, zip it up. And when the graders grade it, all they're gonna do is open up your backhoe and they're gonna try and click on different configuration as long as it moves. That's all good. That's all they're gonna be looking for. All right, we'll perfect. We don't need a drawing, right? No, 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 no. The only thing I want you to get out of this is that we have ways of handling different, of handling components that should be different shapes, air cylinders, hydraulic cylinders, and this is how you do it. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Emmanuel. So I've been having issues with the BOM on my uh, like full assembly, well, all my assemblies for the soda can engine okay. where the descriptions just don't come in. Okay, take the screen and show me. It sounds like you're having a problem with your template. Okay, so now let's go back to your assembly. Open up okay. one of your piece parts, please. It may be just a capitalization or a spelling error. Okay, file. Oh, okay. That works too. And make it bigger, please. Yeah, okay. So part, 
part underscore number revision. Is revision spelled correctly? I think so. I'll check that. Okay. Yeah, it's yeah. Okay. Okay, so your template looks good. Okay. And then, okay, so let's go back. Item part number quantity. Okay, let's try to put a second bomb in, please. Sure, should I just delete this one? Sure. Oh no. Go on over to the uh, left-hand side. You can just click on it and delete. Or that. Okay. Good. ME 120, top level only, whoops. Can I edit that? No, you shouldn't have to. I'm trying to figure out why. So for example, uh, item 10. What is item 10? That's the, uh, the nut. Okay, open up that component, please. Okay, model looks good. And the attributes? Master car, that's all fine. Value is text, that's good. It's under custom. Huh. Let's go back and show me how you dropped in the bomb again. I want to check and see what was clicked. So the model looks good. The assembly looks good. Okay, so then it's top level only. Display as one item number. I don't see anything that looks weird. Huh. Can I paste it back in. Yeah, go ahead and try. So what is it doing?
I mean, if you want, you could take and send me your project files, zip it up into one zip folder, and I could take a look on my machine. Yeah, I just sent you an email with it, I think, okay. a couple days ago. Because it looks like you're doing everything just fine. Okay. Yeah, we'll just have to get to the bottom of this. Okay. Ho hopefully it doesn't act out on the exam for you. That's my big concern. That'd be, uh, yeah, it'd be tricky. That would, yeah, that would not be fun. Okay. All right, well, thank you. Any other questions, folks? Uh, I have a quick question. Like yesterday I was building my engine and should I, wait, I probably should open the camera and show it to you what I'm talking about. All right, can you see me? Yes. Yes. So I have this, I don't know, I should be calling crankshaft or not, but this the thicker wire was while I was bending it, it just broke. And my question was, is there any way I can get another one or I should supply myself another wire no, that I no, know the no, part numbers? No. And... I can absolutely get you more welding wire. That is not a problem. I've got a 20 pound box of it in the, in the shop. That's the copper coated wire? Yes. Ah, uh, yes. It is. It's so not yeah, the just one, come on over. To, one. Just come on over to Crosby. I'll leave a piece on the on the uh, mail podium. Okay. Oh, when do you think I can come? Anytime. Uh, I think I've actually got the. I think I've got the pieces right next to me. I can come right now. Actually, I don't have any costs up there. This. Okay. Let's see, because I specifically had a whole bunch extra cut for exactly this reason. I mean, it's just, it's one of those things that just happens. There it is. Yep, I've got a whole baggie full of them right here. Cool, so I can come over there and maybe get the tape too and maybe put some glue on the places that I'm planning to put glue on? Yep. All okay. of that stuff that you need is right in 102 when the door's open. So okay. feel free I'll to use the tools. Then. Okay, okay. Okay, thank you. Have a good one. Thank you. And I am the last one standing, so we will hit stop record.